let us begin thank you and welcome uh, to everyone uh, for the class and i appreciate that today i'm going to talk and discuss an important topic and that is related to enhancements now enhancement to standard sap system lot of these projects goes for months months and months they are the duration is many months these project goes for many months a standard sap whether it's a finance or whether it's sd or mm or le or pp or any module a standard sap does not take much time the time which we take is in custom development so there are many many enhancements it's a very unfortunate but it's a very important part of it so it is possible that when you go on a project then you are working on one or two or more or four enhancements enhancements are custom programs which is written to enhance the standard sap functionality which is written to enhance a standard sap functionality and this happens now this enhancement to the standard sap functionality can be in fi could be in sd could be in mm could be pp or any module for that in fact almost all the modules there is always enhancements some modules more some modules less but there are always enhancements and fortunately or unfortunately that is where most of the time in the real world get is spent so this project which goes month and months is because of that and after implementation when you are supporting lot of these projects so a lot of support work and all that also happens is happens on the enhancements because those enhancements are changing those enhancements are upgrading so a lot of amends change upgrade happens to standard sap programs and that is where the enhancements come into the picture that is where the enhancement come into the picture now how do we do the enhancements so enhancements life cycle enhancements life cycle is as follows <clears throat> so how the <coughs> enhancement life cycle work so enhancements life cycle is follows the first is there is a gap analysis so normally during business blueprint phase bpp phase or business blueprint phase we do gap analysis 
Now gap analysis is what? Gap analysis is what is the standard and what is required. So gap analysis is the difference between the standard SAP and customer business needs. So we do uh, business requirement, we do business requirement gathering, and then from the business requirement gathering, we find out that, okay, this is a gap, um, this is standard ICB does not do, or whatever is standard ICB does, that does not work the way we need, so there's a difference. And because there is a difference, and that is where the standard SEV requirement and enhancements come into the picture. And that come from the gap analysis. Normally, after the gap analysis, you will be, and then normally you make a list of gaps, that how many gaps you have got, you know, there are 10 and 20 and 100. Many times, in the real world, there are dozens and dozens gaps you find. So there actually are many, many gaps, dozens and dozens of gaps you find, actually. And all modules that happen, it happen in FI, it happen in SD, it happen in MM or WM or LE. So whatever I'm talking is not specific to one module, can be applied to anywhere. So we can list of approval. Then normally there is a gap approval process. So somebody has to do the gap approval based upon priority and criticality, etc. Um, so basically, when you are doing a um, you know list of the gaps, and uh, <clears throat> so you can define. <clears throat> because many times what happens is you get so many gaps that you don't know which one you really need. I have seen gaps like 200 gaps. I've seen 300 gaps. Now 200 gap and 300 gap is a lot of gaps. But you could get that many number of gaps. It is possible. Now, if you end up doing 200 gaps, then project will go for two years. That's good for consultant, because as many number of uh, gaps you get, is very helpful, is very good for consultant, because consultant life is easy. Consultant make a lot of, uh, you know, you know, as many gaps you have, and you know, number of gaps is number of duration, so you get uh, that much more duration for the project. So. You know, that is, um, and after the gap is being approved, then there is a process called FSD. FSD means functional specification writing. This is one of the key responsibility of a functional consultant. So for a functional consultant, writing a functional specification document, so FSD stands for functional specification document. This is one of the key responsibility of a functional consultant. Many times we think that, okay, when I will go on to a project, I will be configuring company code, I will be configuring this, and I will be configuring that. Let me tell you, in most cases, configuration is not really most of the consultants end up doing. I would, have really, I would have told you this thing three months back probably, but I'm... Uh, disclosing this today. You guys will be telling this guy was giving this configuration and that configuration, now telling that is not even responsibility. Let me tell you, 
I'm not saying that is not important. All those things which we have done, all these base transactions and all that, they're all important. There are many other transactions also. But those may not necessarily be your responsibility. That may not be your responsibility. That may not what you may be doing. You may be assigned to some of these enhancements, some of these gaps. And then you're working on those gaps only. And if you're in support phase, support phase, it happened even more. In support phase, you will find that there are a bunch of uh, enhancements which you're doing. And because of those enhancements, you're just working on those enhancements or interfaces. So functional specification document is an important document. You will be understanding or working or testing or writing a functional specification document almost certainly. Almost certainly you will write a functional specification document. Now, when we talk about gaps, gaps are of different types also. I should have told you, when you say list of gaps, there is also type of gaps. In type of gap, there could be enhancements, there could be interfaces. Make a note of all these interfaces. There is a custom report. There could be custom form or layout. there could be conversion. Normally, they are also called right set. Or some people say price. Ninety nine percent of time you will be working on any of these gaps. That is what you will be doing. 99.9% .9 of time, that is what you will be doing. Okay. So type of gaps, So if you see here, this is enhancement, interface, customer report, so that is why it is called custom report, custom form. There is the F. Okay. So that is called right. Some people also have a, another category that is called workflow. Some people include workflow as a part of enhancement, sometimes workflow is separate. It's different, it's, you know, there is no right or wrong answer. Enhancements, enhancing. A standard SAP capability. Interface integrating SAP with non 
SAP systems. Okay. Integrating SAP with the non SAP system. In interface, you can have an inbound interface, you can have an outbound interface. Inbound basically means when data is coming in, outbound when data is going out, so data coming in, data going out. How data is transferred between SAP and non SAP applications. So, data transfer can happen with IDOC. IDOC is called intermediate document. This is very important. On my YouTube channel, I have a video for IDOC processing. You must watch. You must watch. That is very important. You will be working on IDOC. Some of the core transactions of IDOC and all that, if you're working in support, if you're working in implementation, specifically you're working in support, some of these IDOCs and all that, IDOC means intermediate document, how does that processing happens, how these IDOC works, you will be working on it. So there are some of the transactions. So I have created a video um, and I put onto the YouTube channel if you go to my YouTube channel on YouTube, you will find a video with EDI. So I think an hour and hour half video, I put it. How the data transfer. So how the data transfer basically means format of data transfer. Another format which happens is XML. XML stands for extensive markup language. Make a note of that. Extensive markup language. So there is a IDOC and then we go to XML. Okay. So IDOC and XML. Then third one is called flat file. Flat file is also called ASCII file. So we can use flat file and ASCII file as well. So make a note of that. Interface when you're writing and when you're working, those interface, how the data being transferred between one SAP system to non-SAP or non-SAP to SAP. So when we talk about the interface, the interface is nothing but the transfer of the data. So there are two systems and between these two systems, we are transferring the data. Then how the data get transferred? So data get transferred and the format of data transfer is one of these three format IDOC, which is intermediate document, XML, which is extensive markup language. So this is a separate format, 
and it's a fat well. IDOC is very important. A lot of people use IDOC in the real world. Okay. Now, custom report basically means custom report, as we name suggests, report as per customer needs, which is not in standard ICP. So, standard ICP provides many, many reports, but sometimes what happens is those reports are not available in a standard SAP. And because those reports are not available in a standard SAP, therefore, you have to write a report. Now, those report writing can be done in SAP using ABAP. So this could be within uh, SAP ERP. And using a web, or that report could be in BI. Now, you're not doing programming. As a functional consultant, you will never ever do a programming. Okay? So, programming is never required. Okay? So, programming is never needed or never required. So that is where we can uh, okay. So we can have a BI, which is business intelligence. Form basically means when we write FSD for when we write FSD for custom layout. For example, let's say customer invoice or check or vendor invoice. There could be many examples actually. What happens is when you're sending an invoice to the customer, your company's invoice layout could be your own layout. So how will you have that layout to be defined? You can you have to write a functional spec for that. Then uh, you can, so that is where you will be working on an FSD for any of these layouts. Another example is there is something called convergence. Convergence basically means migrating data from legacy system to SAP system. Now this data transfer is also very important. Is also very important. I have, this is also very important. So there is a video on my YouTube channel, must watch it. And how this whole conversion process, data migration process works, uh, when you, specifically when you're working on a SAP project, conversion is one of the very important responsibility, especially for finance people, MM people, data migration is very important. If for finance people, you will be migrating uh, your invent your AR balances, your TP balances, your GL balances, your customer uh, you have to upload, vendor you have to upload, or any other business partner which is relevant you have to upload. Uh, you know, so every module have their own transaction data and master data upload. So for this uh, conversion process, I have created 
a video and I have uploaded it on YouTube so everybody to watch. So this conversion is very important. For interface also, I have created a video and the, that video also on uh, YouTube. So what I normally do is I create uh, some of keep creating these videos so people can watch and you know they have a reference forever. And I put on public place so people can watch it and you know so for interface also very important for interface also i have a created a video a, i think a one hour whatever video to describe only interface so that is also your work so there is already a report uh, in um, video for interfaces there's video for conversion these two are very important make sure that you watch it enhancement i'm going to talk today so I'm going to talk today on the enhancements. Make a note of these so you understand all these different interface. Workflow basically means there's a workflow in SAP, so where you can do the notification, etc. So that is that's where the, the workflow comes into picture. I was talking about that I saw, let me say we have a various enhancements, you have a various gaps, you make a list of gap, there is a type of gap. In the type of gap is one, two, three, four, five, six. There are normally five or six category of the gaps. Sometimes workflow is a part of enhancement. Sometimes it is the uh, same, but normally you will have minimum five different types of gaps. These gaps will take 90% of your time. When you are working on a real project, significant percent of your time, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, of your time okay. and uh, it's still So these are the enhancements which would be okay. so we can do conversion. We can also do workflow. So we can do Enhancements, interfaces, custom report, form, conversion, and workflow. Now, after you identify gap, you get any kind of a gap approved, then you write a functional specification document. Then there is a handover of FSD to development team. The development team which is which who, which will does the actual costing uh, that is where the development come into the picture and the next is okay. the next one is handover and then development team make a note development team Develops it, code it, and give it back to us. Give it back to functional community. Then functional team does testing. Now this testing is a very important uh, responsibility. So functional team does testing. Okay. And after the testing, there's a back and forth. 
testing is okay, there is a bug, then development is fixed, and then come back to us, and they fix. You know, the back and forth thing happens. So we can have this back and forth development uh, process, and finally, FSD is completed, approved, signed off, done. So that this FSD process, you will be working with testing. Testing another thing. So for testing also, um, I have uh, created a video. If uh, I don't know if you have it, and I think I talked to you about. Make sure that you watch. Testing is also important responsibility. So make sure that you watch it because when you go on a project, you may be only working on testing. You have nothing else to do. Only thing you're working on testing. So this is the whole end-to-end uh, -end, uh, cycle. Now I want to go back. And today's agenda is to talk about enhancements. Enhancements So how do we do enhancement? So enhancement we do on the basis of something called user exit or value. I will like you guys to make a note of this paragraph. Make a note of these lines which I highlighted. User exit or baddie. Baddie stands for business add-in. Make a note of these two. Um, uh, these lines which I highlighted. So <clears throat> there is something called user exit or baddie. So when we are writing a custom program, when we are enhancing an SAP standard screen, modifying an standard program, you do not touch the standard program itself. Standard programs are never touched. But to those standard programs, there are various enhancements. To those standard programs, there are various user exits and body which is used to write a custom program because if i'm writing the custom program then where i'm writing this program that where okay? so that is where the user exits and body come into the picture and there are many user exits many bodies which are there in the standard sap which we can use for various enhancements which we can use for various developments and we can understand how to be used there are some transaction code make a note of that there is a transaction code called c mode c mode custom modification there is a transaction code C mode. So this is, I'm just telling you, you personally will not be using this transaction code. Now, if you go back here in the tools, in the tools, and here there are some of these important transaction code. So here, there are some transaction code, but if you go to the development, and that is where we have a transaction code, 
that is called SE38. SE38 is a transaction code where you can write a custom program, which SE38 is used by the ABAP programmer. So ABAP programmer, whenever they're writing a custom program, custom report and all that, in most cases, they will be using SE38. And then there are various other transactions which are here in the out of box. business add-ins, enhancements, and that is where we have a, this transaction code. And then we have a C mode. Okay, so here, we have a transaction code, S mode, C mode, SE18, uh, you will, you personally will not be using this transaction code. So we can do SE18, SE19, S mode, C mode. There is a one uh, transaction code which is called SQVI. You can make a note of that SQVI also. SQVI is used for uh, writing any query. Sometimes people use writing query where you want to, you know, run some kind of data so you can write SQBI. Um, and then uh, we also have a, you know, some other report. Uh, then SC11 we talked last time, SC38 is, uh, which is most often used by web programmers for writing program. SC37 is used for writing functional specifications. Okay. So C mode, S mode, SC18, and that is where these transactions code are. SE18, SE19, S mode, C mode. Okay. That is where we, these are the transaction codes. <clears throat> now, how do we find different user IDs. So step method one, how to find a user exit. So you can find user exit in a, every area in finance and sales and purchase and inventory, as sales and distribution, all different areas. Some areas much more well-defined some areas is less defined. But if you go to SPRO, you will find a lot of custom exits or user exits for each area. You want to do some change in inventory movement type. You want to do it in some in sales. You want to do some in finance. You want to in banking. Different areas possible. So the first thing is, to go to SPRO and look for the documentation. That is the first approach. Now, how do we do that? So, you go to SPRO, same SPRO as we have been using. Then we go to materials management. Then we go to inventory management. It's just an example. Maintain customer exit for inventory management. Maintain customer exit for inventory management. Now, and I will show you in some in sales also, some in finance also, and other areas also. You get you get to see this. And these kind of things are there everywhere. Now the second thing is when you click on the documentation button. So if you look at it, so you can there is a custom exit for uh, inventory management. If you see my cursor. So this is execute button, and this is the documentation. 
you click on the documentation then it gives you a list of customer exit so for the inventory management sap provide the following customer exit mb underscore cf001 updating the material document data upon posting which basically means that when i'm processing a material document if you remember when we're doing a fi in the mm integration we did a material document in if in that material document if i want to make a change and if i want to make a change and if i want to make a, some kind of a, a transaction and any kind of enhancement while posting the transaction so what we can do we can use a mbcf001 that is what you will see here on this document if i go back to finance for example so if you go to finance and here if you keep going you will see that different you know additional setting program enhancements there is a tools customer enhancements and then here business items then we have a different business items there is a extend authorization check for posting to the ledger so when i'm posting to a general ledger i want to make some extension authorization or additional authorization that who can do the posting and those authorizations are additional to the what is standard acp provide so because i want to make that authorization check for posting to a gl and that additional authorization is not part of a standard sap then how can we do that how can that work that is what we see here okay that is what we see here now here we can check documentation we can check documentation if we click on it so here business add-in enable you to define your own authorization check for posting to the ledger in the general ledger <coughs> so i have a requirement in that requirement i want additional checks for posting to a gl in a some special gl or whatever the the field for authorization checks such as activity can be used because this document is very important it's in english you can just read it most of the time it's pretty self explanatory can be used as input for authorization check 
the possible activities are defined in authorization object f dash f a g l dash l. This is some authorization object. In this authorization object, you can trigger an exception or additional logic to create an, your own authorization check, which is different and more than what in a standard authorization check box in SAP. You can create your own check and you can implement. That is called extending authorization check for posting to a larger. There is another one. I'm just giving example. You can just go through and you will find many. You can read through. You can make a list of them. Extend check of open posting period. Posting period has to be open. If posting period is not open, it will not allow you to check. Posting period has to be open. If I go back here. Extend check of open posting period. Allow you to extend the extended existing check of open posting period. So apart from extended SAP, we have open and closing posting period. That logic is being used to allow the which period a posting can be done. And for that, we can use this business add-in. Enhance authorization check for document. Using the body, you can further who can display another authorization check? Similarly, if you go back, check if I see your document. Is a Betty AC document for posting using interface. Before calling. You want to check some FICO document. So when you're posting a document, when you're posting a FICO document, you want to make sure before you post, we do some additional verification. And if I want to do this additional verification, I can use a business add-in to enable additional checks before we can post an FICO document. Just an example. Similarly, many others. And they are everywhere. They are in SD, they are in MM. I show one in inventory, I show in finance. And they are everywhere. And then you can go back. In SD, they are more well defined. For whatever reason, in SD, it is much more better defined. So in SD, they are much more structured, actually. They just create a separate area for having all user aggregates and baddies and all that. In FI, in CO, in, uh, in sales and all that, they are very much scattered. So here, if you are in SD, if you want to have some kind of announcements, and you want to have announcement for the billing, customer invoicing you want to do, there's a user exit for billing. See that here. User exit, number range, module pool, there's a program, RV60 AFGG. This RV60 AFGG is a program. If I go back, if 
if I go to AC 37, oh sorry, AC 38, if I write my program, if I hit display button, then you will see the program. You can't change it. You can't write a code. In this include RV60 AFJ, this include is reserved for user modification. Now here, in this program, there are different user exits user exit number range. User exit number range. This is user exit number range. This user exit can be used to determine the number range for the internal document number. So what happens is, in a standard SAP, you can define number range, you can have internal number range, you can have external number range, that is perfectly fine, that's a standard SAP, no issues with that. But, you can have a number range. which you can custom define. So this is form. So that basically means when a programmer is writing a code, you see that insert? That is how he will be writing a code for customer invoicing and billing if you want to. If I scroll down, these are all custom programs. There is another user exit in this form. And this user exit do what? This user exit can be used to move additional field into communication table, which is used for pricing. So if I want to make any change in the pricing at the time of billing, the standard ICP do not allow in most cases because billing is done upfront. Remember, we're doing SD and uh, FI integration. So now, I want to have a additional field in the communication table. This is your user exit. So the programmer will come and he will write the code between this line and this line. So this user exit is start here and here, and the code would be written here. All the code which is, uh, we see the star mark, the star mark, the star mark, the star mark. The star mark basically means that code is not active. And there are many user exits. Now, you do not, you will never ever be writing a code. That will never be your responsibility. Writing code is never your responsibility. But I'm explaining how a lot of these things are being done. Okay. Now, I, what I want to do, I want to talk about um, how to write FSD and all that. I will take an example because this is one of the important responsibility. And, uh, but I will do that. I will take five minute break because it's too heavy topic. So I will take five minute break. And then after five minutes, I will start and finish the session. Five minute break now, please. I'm back now. Let's continue with our discussion. So we have seen. <coughs> How to find different user exits and all that. The second approach to find user exit. So that is the one approach 
that you go to SPRO, go to the documentation in each of the module in finance or inventory or purchasing or SD and all that. Same, it applied to all modules. The second approach, you can check, that is the second approach. You can check whether there is a suitable exist available for a transaction code. For example, vendor master, it's like we created a vendor master or customer master, you know, any of those masters. So there is a transaction code XK01. In transaction code XK01, we go to transaction code SC93. So I go to the transaction code SC93. Then I put a transaction code here, XK01. We see here. XK01, then we put our transaction code, then we display. When we display, you can check the program that is tied to a transaction code. Every transaction code is linked to a program, any transaction code, customer, vendor, GL entry, air wide wire, custom invoice, this, chap, com, all transactions. Behind every transaction is a program. So I go to SK01. So if I go XK01, I click display button. This is the name of the program. And this can be applied to anything. So we can do SAP. Program back then we find the SAP F ah. sorry F zero two K display. SAP MF02K, SAP MF02K. So that basically means this transaction code linked to this program. This transaction code linked to this program. That we did in transaction code SE93. So we went to transaction code SE93. So make a note of that transaction code, SE93. SE93. Then we have the next thing. After that, we go to transaction code, SE37. Enter the functional module. There should be exit in front of it and then name of the program, then star, uh, sorry, dash, and then star. This is the nomenclature. I would like you guys to make a note of that step. So this is the nomenclature. So this is step number third. So we go to a transaction code SE37. We enter the function module name. But before we enter the function module name, it should be prefixed with exit then dash this button then name of the program then again so this is sap mf02k is the name of program but before that we have to put exit underscore then underscore and start make a note of that that is the nomenclature that is the nomenclature so for that I go to transaction code SC37. Now here, 
So I put, so this was the name of program, ASIC. Um, so this was the name of program, SAP MF02K. In front of this program, I put this word called exit underscore SAP MF02K underscore and then dash uh, that is star. This is the nomenclature. What we need to put in front of program and what we need to put after. So there's a prefix and there is a suffix. Okay. Make a note of that program which you see at your screen, please. Make a note of that. Okay, <clears throat> so there is exit underscore SAP MF02K, and that is what you will see here also. That is what you will see here also. SAP MF. Then, next step is to press F4 value help. F4. So if we either you can click F4, you can select this selection button. Now here we have one, two, three. These three exits are there. So this is one user exit for vendor master user exit for checking prior to saving. So in vendor master, if I want to make some checks prior to making a saving, we can use this exit underscore SAP MF04-001. If I want to do local authority specific user exit, then I can check vendor master data exit underscore MF02-800, check vendor master address data, exit underscore SAP MF02K-801, there is a check vendor bank detail. We have these three user exits for this transaction code for vendor creation. This user exit allow you to perform some additional check prior to saving it. This user is allow you to check the vendor address. Many time in the vendor address, you want to check, uh, you know, zip code, and you want to, you know, a lot of people I've seen because vendor correctness is important. So we don't want to enter the wrong address and all that. So you can define certain rules that before you send the vendor, that what kind of uh, checks you can put. So if you're making some checks or doing a vendor address, so you can use user exit. If you have checked the bank detail making sure the bank detail is correct and you know other information in back you can use this user exit okay these are the various user exit this is second method of identifying user exit so we saw two different methods of finding the user exits now I want to go back to the, our next thing and the final thing that is called how to how to write how to write a FSD. functional 
specification document. The writing functional specification document is one of very important responsibility of functional consultant. So that is one of the important responsibility of the functional consultant. See, it's in a configuration and all that, you know, configuring this, configuring that. Okay, that is all fine. Obviously, you can do all that. But your ability to configure, uh, your ability to do writing a FSD, you will be working on FSD. Either writing it or reviewing it, that is one of the important key responsibilities. I want to show you an example of an actual FST document from my previous experience. This is just an example. Now, every functional specification document has a template. That template is always project specific. So do not see that the template which I'm going to show you, that template would be used in your project also. Every project has their own templates. You can even ask the template to your manager. And then your manager will provide you the template. So the template is provided by the business users. So that is a very important that is one of the very important documents which we can use. So functional specification document. And this is just one example. <clears throat> so this is a functional specification document, is an actual functional specification document from the real world. You will see this nominally, this is every functional specification document is given an ID. So this QTC underscore E-042 is an ID. This is the description of that ID. So in the description, it says overweight and over volume sales order and delivery block. So there is a overweight and over volume check. This system is performed. Okay. That is what you can do here. Overweight and over volume sales order and delivery block. For uh, every functional specification document, there is a change history. See that here? A change created on this date. This was the author. This was the uh, you know, person who did this work. This is the second person. He created this. This was another person. He reviewed. This is another person. He reviewed. Is another person who review. So there is also a change history. Is a formal document. Even the name of the people and all that is incorporated here. Is a sign up also. So IT technical lead Tom Daly he approved it on this day. Formal document. Change history. This is an SAP EC610. Object ID is order to cast E04. This is the name of ID. This is the name of the title of this function. Overweight and over volume sales order and delivery block. Now, this is a simple example. 
just to convey the message. This is enhancement. Now the first paragraph here, that why do we need this enhancement? Like if you remember, when we're doing SDN5 integration, we saw that uh, how we create a sales order or purchase order, different transactions and all that. Now here we see that we have, a, this is the business requirement, which I highlighted. This business requirement is important business requirement. And if we need to meet this business requirement, then we have to do enhancement in the system. Without doing enhancement in the system, this business requirement cannot be met. So here, what is the business requirement? The business has a requirement to automatically apply a delivery block if sales order is over the maximum weight and the volume of our one truck load. So if in my order, if I have an excessive weight, and if I have an excessive volume beyond the threshold, I should give a message. And the message should be that order has exceeded truck load capacity. Because if I'm getting an order, and if that order, the total weight and volume is too high, then there's a problem. We cannot deliver that too high volume, too high weight. Sometimes the uh, you know product is very heavy. So customer service rep need to know when you're entering an order that you're exceeding a limit in the weight and volume. It's a simple requirement, but it's an important requirement because it has a consequence. If I get an order, if I cannot deliver it, then it's a problem. Customer gonna cry. So there is a simple requirement. We need to do valid. It's a simple validation. And what is the resolution? The resolution is that will create a custom AWAP code. Now, custom AWAP code, what are we going to do? This is a nine point, a simple functional specification document. This is written normally by the functional consultants. Writing a functional specification document is one of the important responsibility of a functional consultant. So here, I can have a sales organization. So first step is to create a custom table. And the reason I'm creating custom table so we can create a threshold. And okay, if I say threshold of the weight, then what is the threshold? We don't know. So we create a table. So in that table, we can store the threshold for the weight and volume. This table, should have editable view. Remember, we talked about SM35. Using SM35, I can edit, edit this table. Then we need to write a custom logic in this user exit. And I talked to you about how to find a user exit. Then this user exit is going to read this table. And in, this read, in the table, it's going to verify that total weight and volume is beyond a threshold or not. If it's beyond threshold, then what system will do? Read all these sales order line item, convert the weight volume, sum the quantity, and compare the quantity, and check these value against the corresponding value in the total weight and volume. So if this is the weight in this sales organization, if this is the volume, then I check whether I'm exceeding this weight or this volume or not. If I'm exceeding, then I get an error message that configured message to write order to exceed truck load. Now, writing this functional specification document would be done by you. You will not be doing coding. Coding you will not be doing. What you will be doing is programming uh, what you will do in functional specification and the programming would be done by the programmer and when the programmer does then you will be testing it this is an example of a functional specification document okay. 
so with that i want to conclude the class for today and uh, we will talk tomorrow thank you all and uh, talk to you tomorrow bye for now